you don't mind, I'll start with a word of prayer. And then uh, Pastor Meyer and I are going to kind of team teach the study here. So let's go ahead and pray. Uh, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the blessings of this day and for the opportunity you give to us to study your word together uh, as we learn about uh, baptism and uh, how we are watermarked uh, at birth. We ask that you would uh, continue to send your Holy Spirit to be with us, that our faith may continue to be made stronger through the study of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get the worksheet brought up here. All right. Yeah, so I was about to share that, that uh, each of these comes with a worksheet. Here's my techie way of putting it up for you is like this. So John's going to do it a little bit better. Um, so that hopefully you'll be able to see and zoom in. So we've got a, just a couple questions to work through. Uh, we also have a handful of Bible passages. So we have, looks like about a dozen Bible passages to look up throughout our time today. Um, so I hope you have one handy or close by, but if not, uh, I'm a big believer in reading the scripture. So we'll, we'll dive in and have those read together if you don't have one handy too. Can I go to my computer and print this off? Um, not right now, but we can okay. get you ones in the future if you would like, Sue. Okay. And Thank we can do that for the other ones later on this week. Okay. Oh, I'll bet the reason I don't have one is I won't be able to s attend the virtual conference. I've heard such great things about it, but I won't be there. But I wanted to be in on the Bible studies. So that's okay. why. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, we're also working. We've had a few others that um, are a little hesitant about joining us for the in-person side of the conference. And we're working on a way to get those resources from this conference to those that want it. So if oh, that great. fits you or anybody um, that's on right now, then, then please let us know. Okay. Okay, so question number one, uh, who are we by birth? It's kind of a very large question. Hard so one, hard first question, yeah. Are we talking who, our, our human birth or? Yes, from the human is, standpoint. Who is Andy Gimble? <laughs> we don't have time to unpack all of that. <laughs> That's true. That would All right. be on the scope of this study. Which one of us is the most sane? <laughs> Let's unpack them. <laughs> Brian. We have no volunteers. Yeah, Brian. I think it's you, Brian. <laughs> have you all met me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Susan. It should be you. Wait, Jenny. <laughs> yeah, look, we're all volunteering each other. This is not a healthy relationship to start with. <laughs> All right. So uh, let me just share. Yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit. So me, I am uh, a gimbal, right? So uh, my parents are James and Jill. Um, I was also married into the Rosenwinkel family tree, too. And there are some things that are kind of characteristic about uh, gimbals, right? So they're, my dad is a hard worker. I'd like to think that I'm perceived as a hard worker as well. Um, faith is something that's very important to the Gimbel family and the Rosenwinkel family, and that's something that I think I convey pretty well as well. Um, we also have some differences and negative aspects of us and our family. Um, I know that there's something called Gimbel standard time, which basically means five to ten minutes after the actual time. So sometimes I exhibit those characteristics as well. Um, just because you know, my dad and, and sisters are kind of chronically late. Um, you chronically. Should hear the stories. Well, yeah, you should hear the stories about us getting ready for church growing up when we were all in high school. So like, <laughs> we'd be like in the car. We, we needed to leave at like, you know, 745. And um, nobody would be actually ready at 745. You know, and then we'd all kind of get there in varying degrees. I was usually on the earlier end, but still like, you know, 7.58, and then my sister Abby would come rolling in 7.50, and then my sister Joe would come rolling in like 7.55, and like be brushing her hair and doing her makeup in the car on the way to church kind of thing. And we get there after the confession absolution sometimes, right? That's That, that was us, standard gimbal time. So who are we by birth? Uh, we're, we're children of our parents that were born into a family tree. Um, 
we have some characteristics, we have some reputations. Um, so hopefully you all kind of understand that too. Uh, so the same is true uh, when we think about it in terms of spiritually by birth as well, that we all have um, parents spiritually, we all have a family tree spiritually, and we all have uh, characteristics and reputation. So that's what we're going to be looking at is kind of the, the origins of that uh, in our study today. All right, so let's dive into the Bible. So question two, uh, read uh, Psalm 51.5, Psalm 58.3, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, and uh, Matthew 3, 7 through 10. So how do the scriptures describe us by birth? I have Psalm 51.5, or aren't you doing it that way? No, I'd be happy to have you. Go right ahead, Sue. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Okay, so how does that passage describe us by birth? Sinful. Yeah, that's that's a fun little description. And notice it's even before birth there too. Ah. From, um, from well, at what point were we sinful? From the time we were conceived, I guess. Yeah, when you were like micro small. You know, that's, you were sinful. Okay, um, Psalm 58, verse 3. If no one volunteers to read, then Pastor Meyer gets the job of reading. <laughs> I got Somebody it. do it, or, or the pastor gets it. <laughs> I'm in. Okay. Uh, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray from birth, speaking lies. Oh, that's okay. rosy. That's rosy. How would you describe that, Brian? Ugh. Uh, I'd say that we're um, we're living we, before we're even born. We're we're living counter to to God's will. Yep, estranged. Yeah, that that's a fun one. And then right at the moment of birth, where it doesn't start off very well. We're liars. Yeah, yeah. Um, e thank you. So Ephesians two. What does that say? All right, Pastor Meyer. All right, cool. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived, in the passions of our flesh, carrying out desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind." All right. Nice, happy words there. How does that describe us by birth? Walking in sin, disobedient, living by the passions of the flesh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Children, happy of description. Children of wrath. And you forgot the, the fourth word there. <clears throat> Even, right? We were dead. Dead as a doornail. Uh, right at the beginning. Also, yeah. I like verse four, though. Well, more Bible. Bring it on. What does it say? In verse four? Yeah. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Wait. By grace, you have been saved. Hashtag spoiler. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where yeah. do you think this is going? Come on, hashtag. Whoa. Come on. You could say Slow. that's a very big but there in verse four. It is. <laughs> All right, that was that was bad. Uh, Matthew three seven through ten. Anyone like to read that one for us? Pastor Myers <laughs> volunteering. You can go ahead and jump right in if you want. Okay. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, that's John, he said, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able to raise up children for Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit will be cut down thrown into the fire best sermon ever preached that's like I up there with jonathan Edwards. 
costume? I want it in costume in a dramatical <laughs> service. That's what I was thinking. We could we could do it. Pastor Meyer bringing the drama to the reading there. Well, this is definitely not happy flowery Jesus, right? Um, how does that describe us by birth? Brood of vipers. Yeah. Gross. Snake like I we can be. Hate snakes. I hate them. I I realize that most snakes they're great. They they do the work of keeping the other animal that I hate at bay, which is mice. You know, but like they move wrong. They look wrong. They're just wrong. <laughs> I don't like them. Thank you. I, I'm with you. No argument for me. So, a uh, whole lot of negative answers there in that verse two. And we're on the sorry, trapping. Question we're, two. We're, I'm we're on the trapping block too. Yep. Yep. Well, this is really cheery. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> we can only go up from here. I know. Should I, should I take up the next question then? Please do. Question number three right here. Is there any way to hit big old control Z on this birth? Can we undo this birth? Can we, we redo cannot, it? No. Can, 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 can we redo it? No. I think. No. That's I, like said a, we, I said we cannot. Undo. Right, right. It, it's. I, I think that's it's simple and straightforward, right? But there, I think there's actually more underneath that. Um, that that's worth reflecting on for a hot minute here, because yeah, there's there's nothing we can do to change out the fact that we're we're sinful and fallen, and and it's going it's it's part of our existence, like right now, like this is this is something that even we as, as Christians have to sit back and acknowledge that these things are still true about the life we experience right now. Because I'm, I'm still Jonathan Meyer, son of my parents, and I was still born in sin. I was still conceived in sin, and I'm still a brood of vipers. Oh, a, I'm still a child of wrath because I'm still sinful. But then that lives, you know, but. Well, I don't want to give I don't want to give too much away, Brian. Yeah, but there is a but coming to all of this as well. But but <laughs> like every time I say but, I'm gonna be aware of it now. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> um, but <laughs> however, I, I'm trying to get back in on this and get my train of thought going. However, yes. How however, um, it's it's sort of like it's it's something that doesn't go away and there's value in acknowledging that at the very least because it actually leads to some wonderful deeper realizations as we get further on down the line when we get to questions eight and nine we're, we're going to reflect on that quite a bit but all right th th that's question number three i have one comment to make with question number three the first thing that came to mind was abortionist mindset in that regard no yeah is that really undoing oh. it, though? Yeah, they think they are. Well, yeah, we like. So we, it we, can't be undone. You're right. Right, but it's there's once once the life once life has started, it has started. Mm -hmm. Once it is what it is, it is what it is, and and I've never known a human that's been able to to change that. Right, we can influence right. things. We can make we can make certain things happen, but mm -hmm. I can think of one. Okay. Yeah, I'm, we're going to read about him right here in, in John 3. Oh, okay. So Brian says, let's push this study along. <laughs> yeah. Brian's all like, no, Brian's all like I'm, 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 we're, we're not even going to reflect on our sinfulness. No, no, not going to happen today. Oh, look at that. There's a webinar. I didn't know that. Oh, well, thanks. I turned notifications off. What the heck? All right. All right. Can you stroll down a little bit, Pastor Meyer? I can. Uh, so the passage is John 3, 3 through 6. So, Brian, if you're there, would you be willing? Can I pick on you to read that? Uh, <clears throat> sure. Uh, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, 
Uh, unless one is born again, he cannot uh, see the kingdom of God. Nic Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Thank you, Brian. So the question yep. before us is, uh, what does it mean to be born again from above and of water and of the spirit? This one's this one's a two foot putt. Because it's uh, referring it's... to Jesus being the water of life. Is that what you're referring to? You no, know, you, you made it into like a 10 foot putt. Yeah. <laughs> The old Adam and the new man. Ah. Uh, you know, you made it into like a five foot putt. And you're, yeah. you're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, this is a gimme. I mean, come on. Just, we just like, say okay. baptism. This is a pre Bible study, people. Woo! He said Where the word of the Isaac day. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a pre published Bible study. So we're, we're rolling with it here. So we, uh, Pastor Meyer and I have a, yeah. The questions aren't phrased fantastically for our liking, but hey, we're going with it. We're working with it. Yeah, but uh, notice notice how that kind of ties in with question three above, right? So if there's no way to undo it, what does Jesus kind of propose as a means to do that? I think that's what you were kind of kicking towards, right, Brian, in your thoughts earlier? Yes. Yeah, so he proposes that can't undo it but you can go through like a new transformation through the the waters of holy baptism too um so let's look and see what that new new birth actually looks like uh in question five so we have three passages we have uh, romans 6 3 and we have uh, john 1 12 through 13 and then titus 3 5 through 8. i have romans Okay. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? All right. So what does this tell us uh, as to what sort of new birth is baptism? Well, it's both a death and a birth. I lost the screen with the worksheet on it. Yeah, yeah. Technical oh. difficulties. It's coming back. Okay, that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so it is a, a birth and a death, right? So the end of that verse says uh, we were baptized into his death. Yeah, so that's kind of a... Um, can you unpack that a little bit as to what that looks like or what that means? Well, the well, second I half of the verse is in yeah. order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And also, oh, okay. I think it's a death to self. Right, and yeah. And so the birth with Christ. Right, so there's, I, mean, I talked a little bit about this in the sermon this weekend, but, you know, we live with that tension, right? Sinner and saint in our lives. And so it's like the, the sinner part of us goes to the cross with Jesus and gets uh, crucified and then it stays in the, the grave. And then the, the saint part of us uh, is raised again um, through the waters of holy baptism. So there's that, that beautiful imagery that takes place there. Um, how about uh, John chapter 1? That's John 1 verses 12 and 13. John 1, 12 and 13. Would anyone like to read that? Right, get All right, Pastor Meyer, are you there? <clears throat> yes, yes, I am. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but from God. Okay, so what does that passage tell us about that new birth in baptism? Well, 
Well, we go from being children of our parents and of mankind to children of God. Yeah, exactly. So there's um, this is one dynamic that you'll see throughout John's gospel too. You know the and and other John of John's writings as well. The the dynamic between the flesh and spirit, or um, so it talks about us being born of the flesh, right? So that's that's me being born from my parents in a hospital in St. Louis, right? But it talks about um, the new birth being children of God. So we'll have uh, different parents and different family. So um, we're connected to God in that way. And that's resembled in the fact that we're given a new name when we are baptized in the actual rite of baptism. Any questions or comments on that one? Very good. Okay. Perfectly explained. Let's go to Titus 3, uh, 5 through 8. Thanks for getting the tech stuff figured out, Pastor Meyer. Always. Anyone like to read Titus 3, 5 through 8 for us? All right. He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and uh, profitable for people. Okay, thank you, Brian. So what does this passage tell us about our new birth in baptism? Maybe let um, me ask you this. Who's, it, whose work is it? Yeah. Let's start there. It's God's work, and it is the truth. Yeah, so God's through, work there from the first couple of verses. And through yep, the Holy um, Spirit, we're given... Um, the ability to do good works and have our, our spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not something that we can choose to do, right? So we can't choose to be born again. Okay, um, it's the work of God, and God's the one that's doing the regeneration and renewal act that's there in verse 5. Okay. And the whole impetus for it is mercy. Mm. Right. There's no other reason for it than mercy, like it says. Right. But the, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. That that was it. There's no nothing else about it that drove the action. Right. Yep. Yep. Much like our human birth and you know, the spiritual birth is the same way. It's all it's all God. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions on this? this uh, idea about this new birth and baptism. Okay. If not, then let's move on. Question number six. How does baptism make us new? Let's read Galatians 3, 26 and 27 and 2 Corinthians 5, 17. <clears throat> You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay, thank you. And then um, 2 Corinthians. I realized I skipped the first verse. Sorry. No, you did a good job. Got it all. Do you want me to get that one? Therefore, Something. if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All right. So, so let's unpack these two things and let's understand how does baptism make us new? What are the, what are the actions that take place that make us into something new? You mean water in the word? Well, there there is water in the word. We understand that, that that's happening. 
what's going on? What what do the eyes of faith see when water meets word? What what's what's happening in that water? Because that's what's described here in Galatians, and that's what's described in Second Corinthians. So what is it that's happening when water meets word and, and water and word meet your forehead, right? Because there's a ton of stuff happening. And Galatians lays out for us um, some wonderful things. I really like the imagery of Second Corinthians. Let's start with Second Corinthians since you're there, Brian. Would you mind reading that for us again? Uh, seven, 17. 17, yeah, thank you. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So what what happens in our renewal there? What, what's the action that's taking place? Our old sin and fleshly desires are washed away, and we're imputed with the, the newness of uh, being dead and raised with Christ. I love I love what what St. Paul does here with the language, right? The old has passed away. Passed it's away. It's dead. Yeah, he uses the euphemistic language of death, right? Like, oh, it's they passed on. He's passed away. But this is like this is like the wonderful use of the euphemism, right? The old man who is in us, he dies. That's that's what happens. He dies in the water, and then the new one comes to life. The new one is invigorated, inspired. Both of those words kind of work together there. So there's this wonderful action that we understand what's happening going on in there. How does baptism make us new? It takes that old man who is part of us and baptism kills him. What better news is there? <laughs> well, there's, there's actually better news because that's coming, right? But wait, there's more. <laughs> because after the old one's dead and gone, the new man begins to live and work inside of us. Brian's Brian's giving me the finger, which means I need to shut up. So go ahead, Brian. That just means I had a comment. <laughs> go I'm ahead, Brian. Interrupt you. Get off. <laughs> You're talking about the way that that Paul writes this too, and it says "new creation," which mm -hmm. I think is pretty awesome because we know that God's creation was perfect until we screwed it up. So a new creation is going to be perfect again. It's not like we're just um, being changed a little bit we're being completely freshly created so that's kind of awesome yeah the experience is the, the the what the experience that we press toward and the experience that we receive in baptism is completely unknown to us isn't that mind-blowing i mean i just in in some ways in some ways i'm jealous of people who are baptized later on in life and remember mm -hmm. life before baptism I, I'm a little bit jealous because they they are quite evidently aware of the differences of life between before and after. Now I'm thank I'm thankful. Like don't don't get me wrong. I'm very thankful that my parents June twenty first, nineteen eighty seven, took me to the font um, and I was baptized because I lived my entire life in this hope and promise. But my my struggle is quite a bit more existential whereas i don't have the, that moment where old passes away and new life begins mine's the daily struggle that we all live in right um, let's refresh our memories with galatians if, if somebody's still there if not i can pull it up here uh, but galatians 26 and 27 let's reread that one you are all sons of god through faith in christ jesus for all of you who were baptized into christ have clothed mm. yourself with Christ. Oh, I love this language. Oh, man. And, and Brian, you were at Bible study last Wednesday. Sue, you were there online, too. We talked about the garment, right? The robe. Mm -hmm. And and um, that was in Zechariah, the, the, the apocalyptic vision of the robe and what that all means and what it entails, because it's a theme we see throughout Scripture. So how does baptism make us new? Not only is this, the, there's this dead and alive, but you, you get this thing placed over you, right? And we know that that's Christ's righteousness. In baptism, we are clothed with Christ's righteousness. So when God looks at you, not only does he look at, at somebody who has struggled with sin and, and is a new creation, he sees something better. He sees his perfect son who not only kept the law perfectly, but fulfilled it, right? So when God looks at you, it's like my parents used to look at my older sister. 
because they loved her more than me. <laughs> that's, that's the joke. <laughs> but anyways, right? So, but you, you, you kind of get the whole thing. So when, when God looks at you and you've put on Christ, it's like, I, I'm always going to do this. I'm going to go back to, to Genesis. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. I have to. <laughs> but Let's go to the very beginning. It's a yeah. very good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of music. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, we go back to Genesis. And when Jacob has to steal the blessing, right? He has to be crafty about it. And Isaac questions all the time until he gets to the robe right because isaac his eyesight's failing so he leans in close and he smells the robe and that's what seals the deal ah the smell of the fields this is my son esau and then he gives jacob the blessing and that's kind of the same scene that, that paul paints throughout his epistles with christ's robe of righteousness that we wear the same sort of thing like god leans in and he smells the robe and he smells his son and you, you feel the happiness and the warmth and the love that God has for his only begotten son. And you get that and you get that blessing. And that's a truly wonderful thing. So how does baptism make us new? Death and alive again, old man gone, new man here and putting on Christ, getting to experience, getting to experience God the father as if we are his only child. Wow. Fantastic. And right. is it not true that in baptism, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ is also in us, which is even more powerful in my mindset. So you, you could you could say Christ is with us. I think I think the Holy Spirit is the person. That's the person who's promised in there that the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our heart and that Christ is with us. Now, this isn't to say that Christ isn't in us. It's just the Bible uses this language of the Holy Spirit who is at work in us, like literally inside of us, okay. and Christ being with us. But before we get too hasty with saying there's this separation there, because as soon as we do that, we're into Trinitarian heresy, right? Mm -hmm. So let's not divide the person. I have no idea how that works. Um Read but the, the promise Athanasian is that, Creed real quick again. Yeah, let, let's pull up the Athanasian Creed here. Again. <laughs> but but there is there is this idea. Oh, there goes there goes the iPad again. Here, okay. Um, there is this idea of if we want to properly place work, we should understand the Holy Spirit is the one at work inside of us, and like Jesus is at work from the outside, but also the inside. Mm -hmm. I don't know where God the Father is in on all of this, but he's he's there too, right? So God, I, I guess the most correct thing is. God takes up his, his residence inside the temple of y'all now by virtue of baptism. And yeah, he works in us, right? Uh, he sanctifies us, keeps us in this faith. And well, what a wonderful thing that is. Oh, well, Pastor Andy Gimble saved the day. <laughs> and you know what? Your, your, screen won't, your screen won't bork like mine will, so... Hey, fantastic. Oh, audio. Audio guy. Mine won't go. As, yeah, oh, there you go. Mute button there on the go. mic. Whoops. <laughs> Were you done? I was just putting it up there for everybody. <laughs> Were you quite done? No, we're talking about baptism. I could go all day. That's <laughs> like, true. You could. Sorry. Where's Isaac Conrad when you yeah, need it? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I think I think for the sake of the discussion around question six, I, yeah, we, we can move on. Yeah, yeah, there are a few other fun questions to talk about too. Uh, number seven, so we are on that one now. Uh, what about us is new? So we have two Bible passages there: uh, Psalm fifty-one ten and uh, Galatians three twenty-six and Galatians four verse seven. So I guess three passages. Shall we sing the psalm together? Yeah, I mean, why not? Do you want to sing it? Intone it for us. I want to know which one you're singing. <laughs> Actually, no, it's going to be a mess. Like, yeah, jokingly, yeah. But, like, the delay between Google Meet will we'll all be, like, slowing down gradually until we're at a funeral dirge. <laughs> and then we'll all stick it out anyways because we committed. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's read that just just in case those don't have it here. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So what about us is new? 
our heart and spirit. Yep, that's right. Now, notice that's uh, new, right? Instead of just like refurbished or transformed, right? Brand I new, brand spanking new imagery too. So that's kind of an important idea to keep in mind as well. Oh, yes. That I've always found to be pretty powerful because like, hmm. yeah, have like a brand spanking new thing is, is pretty neat. Uh, Galatians 3. This is back to my verse and another one. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And then 4 verse 7 reads, So you are no longer a slave but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. All right. So what is, what is new in this verse? We have an inheritance now. Yeah. Why do we have an inheritance? Because we're an heir alongside Christ. We yeah. are a child of his. We are, well, actually, let's look at the words. It doesn't say child there. A son. son. Son, yeah. Yeah, so here, here's my fun question. So is everyone in this study right now, men and women, are you all a son? In the eyes of God. Yes. yes. Oh. Pastor oh. Meyer, go ahead. <laughs> right, this this has to do with the fact that we put on Jesus, right? That's the that's the idea. The, the text presents uh, time and time again, right? Like, yes, yes. So Sue Bredo, uh, Brian Belter, Sue Haywood, and, and Jennifer Conrad, and maybe Pastor Meyer, but definitely Pastor Gimble, right? You stand before God as beloved children by virtue of your baptism. But it is this is like the even better. This is like, but wait, there's more. When you stand before him, you stand before him as Jesus. And, and that is that is incredible. Because whereas whereas I, as Pastor Jonathan Meyer, am an adopted child of God, right? Jesus is his only begotten son. And and there there is a love there that as an adopted child, you just you don't have the same access to. But through, through the way God works this, you do. It, it's 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 mind boggling. I don't even I don't have the words for it yet, right? But but the idea that that we get to be loved like God loves Jesus. Yeah. Well, as God loves Jesus too, and and the other thing too is you know legally speaking, you know in those days. The sons were the ones that got the inheritance too, right? So that's why it's. I think it's even important for us to mm -hmm. to have that part of it also. Um, yeah, I mean, having an, it, God's inheritance is like a huge, huge blessing for all of us. Huge. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that or comments? All right, hearing none. Let's move forward. In question number eight. <laughs> We've already touched on this one, but we're going to read some scripture that's going to give us some new insight, right? We all know what becomes of the old Adam and the first birth, because we, we talked about that a little bit in question number six. But let's read, let's start off with Psalm 51, 7. Let's see, I know I have it pulled up here too. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Okay. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. I he already had that. Says, purge me with hyssop. I purge. like that word. Yeah. Oh, um, yes. Um, yeah, why do you like it, Brian? Because it just it invokes that description of something being ripped away and taken away and it completely gone. So I like that purging it, you know, mm -hmm. doing away with it completely. Annihilating, making and forgetting, it, and forgetting it and erasing it from history, forgetting it ever existed. I like that. Mm -hmm. Purging is always so thorough, you know, when mm -hmm. I think about it too. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, it's, that that is that is kind of a neat aspect of it. It's thorough. There, there's nothing that's left incomplete with it. Mm -hmm. I like that. Whiter than Just, snow, isn't that? That's whiter than white. That's kind of. Like... I already accomplished that with my complexion. So the only problem here was David just didn't know Northern Europeans yet. <laughs> you and me both, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but but that is like think of anything whiter. The back like, of my thighs, right? <laughs> <laughs> I there is there is so much that I love about winter, and snow is definitely one of them. And snow does this this interesting thing, and this is like complete sidecar, it has very little to do with the psalm, but, but it also, like, this brought up the thought of it. Um, do y'all ever, like, when it's snowing, go outside and listen? Have you ever done that? Snow, yes. I, I absolutely love listening to it snow, because if it's snowing good and hard, you can kind of, like, hear the snow just a little bit. But also, the most interesting thing I found was it gets quieter when it snows. Mm -hmm. And I was actually wondering this. I Googled this a couple of years ago and I found out it's because of how snow works. It actually traps the sound because there's so much air inside of there, like inside of a snow compaction that it works like acoustic foam inside of a studio. So it actually makes things quieter. And, and so there's this beauty of the snow that is just, unbeatable in, in how in how wide it is but and also in how it settles things down and, and brings this this peace <laughs> christmas that peace on earth goodwill toward men but yeah you know what i mean like it it's amazing how nature kind of reflects that ebb and flow even in our language so all right yeah, like with the senses it's like the the auditory goes along with the visual so we have right. the peace and the stillness and then you have the same thing reflected in what we hear as well as what we see just, I love it. Okay, all right. Enough enough waxing poetic, right? I should stop. Uh, Acts 2, 38. And we'll also need 22, 16 if somebody wants to pull that one up. Acts 2, 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, 22.16. And now... What are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away, calling on his name. Okay, so what well, becomes of our old Adam in first birth? By Acts chapter 2, it's it's sort of the same thing. By Acts chapter 2 and 22, he, he uses the same language. What does baptism do? Here's what I found. Well, oh, well, Siri came up with an answer, too. But that's wrong, Siri. <laughs> what did Siri say? I need to know. Um, she did, brought up Matthew 4, 3. It says, what does baptism do? Yeah, it's, it's weird. The wording is unclear whether Satan is asking Jesus to miraculously transform. It's like, you go home, Siri. You might be drunk. Okay, yeah. I was just curious. So specifically, the thing that ties chapter 2 and 22 together has to do with our sin and what baptism does with our sin, right? Um, and the idea is that the sin is, what's the word? Purged. Washed. Uh, Washed. Yeah. Okay, fine. Let's go with purge. Let's import Psalm 51 on the text. I like it anyways, because it's the same sort of thing, right? Um, that's the idea, that, that it's, it's washed away. Um, and I like that every once in a while, I wish I did this more often, but every once in a while I do think of it. Like when I come in from working on a car or something like that, and you got grease and oil all over your hands. That was me it yesterday. Right. But it, it <laughs> takes, it takes some work in to get that stuff off. Even if you have like good pumice soap and everything, sometimes it takes, it takes a good bit of work to get real, real dirt off your hands. 
But eventually, they end up clean. No matter how dirty they are, they end up clean. And it's this like wonderful image of, uh, of what baptism does with us and our sin. Okay. Romans 6. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Okay. Oof, oof, oof. What happens to our old self? I love this imagery. It's put up there on the cross with Christ. Crucified. It's not just, we didn't just, it didn't just get like killed. God didn't just kill it, right? He killed it. There, there was, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about crucifixion, right? It, it was, it was, I mean, they were efficient with crucifixion, and it was, it was a death of deaths. Holy cow. And that's, that's what happens to our sin. All right. I'm looking at the time, so I'm moving us along kind of quickly here, too. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And somebody get Ephesians 5 up. Pastor Gimbel. Do you want me to do the Ephesians? Okay, yeah, I'll hope do Ephesians. Ephesians. Oh. <laughs> Brian's trying to work ahead of me. <laughs> Ephesians is like my favorite Pauline letter. Oh, am I going to win the race then? <laughs> I've got Ephesians 5. If you want that, let me know. I was kind of waiting in the wings for the uh, Corinthians. Okay, 1 Corinthians six eleven, And such were some of you, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So there, they use, they use the word, the Lutheran word, the one that starts with a J. And right. the one that starts with an S, I noticed. Shh. Like they're yeah. both from the same. Well, no, no, no. We're Lutherans. We, we no. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> We're Lutheran, Andy. We don't talk about sanctification. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, the big one. Justified, right? We are justified. Um, and, and to be sanctified, too, by baptism. Um, which is an, an interesting and truly wonderful thing. That, yes, unfortunately, we don't talk about near enough. But to be justified is to be declared scot-free, clear in court. And then to be sanctified is to be set apart, made holy, right? Those things happen in our baptism. Okay, Ephesians 5. Brian, are you at Ephesians 5? I am. Yeah, okay. I'm going to let Brian do it. Sorry, Andy. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Be like that. I like Brian. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to get in the middle of this. <laughs> Pastor Gimble is no longer my friend. Brian is my friend. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Gimble and I already went through this when we <laughs> extended the call to you. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, Brian, you, I was thinking of that too, Brian. I received one of the greatest burns I've ever received in my life right then. <laughs> and it was fine. I like Kevin better anyway. That Oof. was... <laughs> no, it was. I like Kevin. Full stop. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, boys. All right, Sorry. take your lever, Mem spat somewhere else. <laughs> Memories, that's all it is. All right, Ephesians five twenty five. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her, that He might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the Word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle of any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. I love that. So what becomes of our old Adam in first birth? Cleansed and washed away by the water with the word. Mm. Yeah. Look at verse 27. What, what ends up happening? Like what's the end result? Without a blemish, holy and spotless. he might. Uh, uh, this, this language at the very start. Uh, he might present the church to himself in splendor. Splendor. Ah, fully adorned. 
right? And then this, this actually has a tie over. Ephesians here has a tie over with Revelation chapter 21. When John describes the new heavens and the new earth, how does he describe new Jerusalem coming down out of the sky? As a bride adorned for her husband. And this is the same way that Christ presents ourselves to him. Okay. So we understand that what becomes of our old Adam and first birth, it's purged, it's crucified. We are justified, we are sanctified, and then presented as holy without wrinkle or blemish. So now we get to the grand million dollar question as we are preparing for the hashtag watermarked conference. What does it mean to have a watermarked birth? I think everyone should answer this one because I think this is an open-ended question. So um, sh shall I start? Or, or sh is somebody else ready to go? Who's, who's got an answer? Come on. I want to hear from Susan and Jennifer. Well, we can't pick on them to start. Right, right. <laughs> who's going to start? I'm, I'm thinking about who's going to start the train. And since, Sue, you, you went ahead and volunteered other people. <laughs> <laughs> it no, means seriously. baptism in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Jennifer. Yes. <laughs> What's your answer? What does it mean to have a watermarked birth? It makes me think of the sign and symbol that's put on the child's forehead and over their heart. Mm -hmm. So reminding us again, like you said, of being baptized in, in the in the triune God. All right, now you get to pick somebody. Yeah. No, no, I can't do that. <laughs> We'll pick one of the pick pastors, then it's easy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pastor Gimbel. <laughs> All right. So for me, to have a watermarked birth, the thing that stuck out to me from the study today was the kind of the inheritance aspect of it, too. So it means that I'm part of God's family and have a new family identity. And have all the things that come along with it, too. You get to pick someone else. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to pick Brian Belter. All right. Um, a watermarked birth. I am purged with a mighty fire hose of all my sin, <laughs> and I end up in a calm and beautiful pool of sanctification. Oh, I like it. I like it. Look at that water. Water everywhere. All right, Brian. And your choice. Oh. You got two. Yeah. Uh, a suit. It would. Oh, great. You know what? This is just like middle school recess. Well, I know you're going to talk for a while, so I'll let you go last. <laughs> okay. All right, Sue, go ahead. Um, watermark birth. Um, that my sins died with Christ on the cross and that I'm justified through the waters of baptism. All right, so, yeah, okay, it's Pastor Mark. Oh, your answer, John. Well, I actually, I was, <laughs> on, with the discussion today, one of the things that caught me for reflection was the same thing that caught Pastor Gimbel, but in a different way. And, and, see, I like this. It's like Pastor Gimbel and I, we react to the same things, but differently, and I love that. But the idea of being an heir, what struck me there was, by virtue of this new birth, like by virtue of my human birth, we know what heir is, right? I, I have things that I have inherited, whether it's genes, that's just about all I inherited from my ancestors. <laughs> but, you know, and, but you pass those on. Like that's kind of the thing with an inheritance. Like not only, not only does, does God give me this new birth, but he gives me something that's worth passing on. And, and there, are, there are other heirs to be had so to speak, right? Good it's, pastor it's, answer. It, well, <laughs> that's, not, that's not where I was going with it, but, you know, it's like the, the idea that that you inherit, right, and then you get to, you have something worthwhile. You have something worth passing down. I think that that's a wonderful thing because not only are you given a new birth, but you're given birth with a purpose. And it's also a responsibility, I believe. Yep. I, I would agree with you there. Okay, so that, that's my answer. I didn't want to, it's, I've already carried on way too much. I know, thanks, Brian. 
Never mind. Pastor Gimbel's my friend. Brian and I are no longer friends. <laughs> uh, I'm, I just I'm, go back. We're and in forth. this weird friendship triangle thing right now. It seems like. <laughs> also, why do you only get one friend? You know, like, can't we all just be friends? Get along. <laughs> uh, should we close this thing up? <laughs> As I'm already taking it right off the rails. What do you say, Is that Pastor? The Gimbel? last question. Yeah. Yeah, that's the last right. question. All right. So, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for joining and, and reflecting with us. I Honestly, this has been ridiculous amounts of fun. I think this is the most fun I've had with the Bible study. What do you say, Pastor Gimbel? It's been good. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a good fantastic. time. So thank you all for coming. I filled my cup. Thank you. I didn't realize how much I needed this intimate wow. Bible conversation. I filled it with water. <laughs> Yes, I have my glass almost in. And the word, yeah. <laughs> agua, same as agua. Even though you might not have liked those questions and their wording or whatever, it definitely led us in a good direction, so that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of them tomorrow. are, yeah. Again, some of them are two-foot putts that are yeah. apt, Just but. like, just tap it in. Just tap right, it in. exactly. <laughs> so, by the way, we're, we're uh, rotating who's leading this, so tomorrow is going to be... Pastor Meyer and Dana, and then Wednesday is going to be Dana and I. So we're kind of, you get to see okay. all of us. If you okay. want, just for the uh, social observation to see how we work together as staff, you get to <laughs> watch all of that happen. It's nuts. So maybe Dana um, will be my friend. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, Brad. I'm glad that's what you're worried about with Bible study. <laughs> all right. Should since, we wrap this since thing I up? I opened, yeah, I was going to say, since I opened, how about you close? Yeah. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you truly are the giver of every good gift, and you have blessed us with this time together as we reflect on your word, and specifically how you describe our rebirth, our baptism. And so, Lord, we ask that this time together might be a blessing to us as we go to work in your kingdom this day and every day, that we might always remember our baptism and the wonderful things you accomplished with water by your word. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Uh, we'll send a calendar invite, too, in a little bit for tomorrow and Wednesday. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Brian. <laughs>